Can man survive with no air for more than a few minutes? How long can one stay underwater without oxygen or buried alive? Does cardiac arrest inevitably mean death? Or is the brain capable of controlling all the bodily functions? There has to be intense concentration. And is consciousness a mechanism of the soul that can be trained? If I sit three days, I can sit four days, I can sit five days. Is it possible for a human being to remain without food and water, with no sleep and no air for days at a time? This kind of learning has never been made public. Can anyone disappear and reappear as if by magic? There is a trickery way of doing it. The answers to these questions are the secrets guarded for centuries by the great yogis of the Himalayas. Something already immortal is there. Is that why some can remain buried underground, sit underwater or in an airtight glass chamber for extended periods of time in a state of suspended animation known as samadhi? India, a world rich in tradition and contradictions. Here, the old coexists with the new. But what is gained from modernization is often at the expense of the mystic tradition long associated with this beautiful country, one of the principal repositories of ancient knowledge. For thousands of years, the Himalayas have been inhabited by holy men, gurus, sadhus, and rishis, teachers, mystics, and sages who uphold the highest principles and many of whom are known to have great powers. And while paranormal phenomenon is more common in India, it is often seen as nothing more than magic by magicians such as Brandon Scott. Magic repeats phenomena in nature. There's a natural way of doing it, and there's, there is a trickery way of doing it. It's predicated on uh, physical, perhaps mechanical, alterations that assist in creating an illusion. But the whole world is an illusion, according to the Vedic scriptures. Consistently demonstrating exceptional yogic powers over the past 25 years, Pilot Baba is a Himalayan mystic who has been bringing forth the ancient knowledge of India. The oldest religion of India is Sanatan Dharma. Sanatan means immortal religion, which never invite anybody to change their religion. They welcome everybody as a home. They see in everyone God. Religion is responsible for civilizing man, taking him from the jungle to the city. Through intuition, man discovered the uses of fire, water, food, and plant medicines. But later, fear of dying disturbed the inner peace of man and led to adoration of the forces of nature. Nevertheless, even with prayer and devotion, disasters could not be averted. And man is struggling, man is suffering. But when he was born, he was enlightened with no problems, no suffering, no mind. Living in the warmth of the mother, every human being has a experiences of being living in the samadhi, in the warmth of the mother. The sages realized that man has to look within for the answers. They discovered the human is modeled after nature. This body is consists of five elements, earth, density, water, dust, and uh, agni, fire, and air, hawa, and ether, akas. There are three types of body, gross body, subtle body, and fallen body. So yogi, like a pilot baba, and maintain his gross body and change it into subtle body and realize through causal body. The gross body is our physical body. The subtle or astral body is the vehicle of emotions. And the causal body is the seat of consciousness and the soul. Contemplation of those three bodies resulted in meditation, a practice that is now acknowledged in philosophy and clinical psychology. Dr. Stanley Krippner is a professor of psychology at the Sabro Graduate School and Research Center in San Francisco, California. 
the scientific community now appreciates that meditation does have health benefits. I have witnessed yogis who have been able to go into states of consciousness where their brain waves change very suddenly and very quickly. They have such control over their mental processes and over their cognition, their cognitive skills, that they're able to cut off ordinary thinking and produce what is sometimes called a meditative state of mind in which words, thoughts, symbols are at a minimum. There is also evidence that as people go deeper into meditation, some notice certain side effects. They begin to experience what are called CDs or unusual abilities. But the meditation teachers usually say, don't become attached to those unusual abilities because those are just the byproducts. That's not what meditation is about. Meditation is about freeing the self from the body, the emotions, and the mind. From that state of consciousness come intuition and higher knowledge. One by one, they find out the exercise of the yoga, they find out the pranayama, they find out the science of the prana, they find out the science of the mind. Dr. Charles T. Tart has studied the mind extensively and first came across Eastern philosophy when reading a book written by Swami Vivekananda, one of the first Hindus to come to the West. He put forward the proposition that yoga is a science. And by that, he meant that it wasn't something where you had to believe certain things, but rather there were some techniques to practice with your mind, meditation techniques and the like, and then certain results would probably follow from that, and if they followed, then you understood something. Through meditation, austerities, and exercises, advanced yogis freed themselves from attachments, sorrows, and expectations that result from identifying ourselves as entities separate from the mystery of life. Expanding their awareness beyond the concept of duality, right and wrong, black and white, they discovered the origin of life, the immortal consciousness that pervades everything. Thus they were liberated from the bondage of the human condition and attained self-realization and, with it, control over the physical body. Take care of the body, love the body. Because you are in the world because of this body, not because of the soul. There are yogis who also have been able to control their heart rate and their respiration, sometimes to the point of fibulating the heart. In other words, making the heart flutter in such a way that it is virtually stopped. In samadhi, the self realizes the immeasurable presence that contains it, like a drop of water merging with the ocean. At that point, all physical, emotional, and mental activities stop. That is called science of the samadhi. Okay, from everywhere, you are disconnected, your communications, your function energy, your systematic organization, all the coordination power, all the cooperation power is totally disconnected and made it to relax, not to die, not sleep. It is made it to relax. To yogis in India, samadhi, or suspended animation, as it is sometimes referred to in the West, is a mystical experience. Samadhi is getting in touch with the self. It's an inner journey. There's different kinds of samadhi. So there may be self-cognition and there may be divine cognition. But most samadhis are taken privately. They are not, uh, they're not taken publicly. It's very few samadhis that are taken publicly. But Pilot Baba has been taking samadhi in public for more than 20 years. He has been interred for 33 days and 15 days at a time, sat underwater for six days, twice, and remained in an airtight glass for three to five days, several times. By performing these feats, Pilot Baba wants to show that through self-realization, man can accomplish anything. His purpose is simple, yet ambitious, world peace. Pilot Baba Ji, is looking at enlivening consciousness by connecting to a number of people and it's at a higher level in terms of uh, it's not for yourself, the platform is much larger. 
So when that message gets conveyed to a number of different people and they decide that they're going to work together towards this, leaving everything aside, then it becomes a common goal. One of his main concerns is that the level of planetary consciousness is decreasing. And if the masters and the sages do not do anything about it, then nobody else is going to. Pilot Baba was born Kapil Adwait on July 15, 1936, from a comfortable family in the town of Sasaram in the state of Bihar. At a very young age, he met his guru Hari Baba, an older renunciate who used to play with him. A happy childhood led to an adolescence of angst and temerity. After completing his higher education in Darjeeling, he traveled abroad. His sense of patriotism led him to a career in the Indian Air Force where he eventually became a wing commander. He flew missions during the Indo-Pakistani War in the late 1960s. But despite his accomplishments, he was not happy. I was flying for the Air Force and I found that we are just fighting and struggling for our own boundaries. We are killing the people for nothing. Though inside we are the same, but outside we have been divided. Periodically, Kapil would receive the visit of his guru, Hari Baba, who had a flair for always appearing at auspicious moments to offer words of wisdom or rectify the situation at hand. Whenever I don't do a mistake, he never comes to me. But if I did a mistake, he will come and correct me. And for that, he has a two rupees prize. One day on a mission in a MiG-21, he lost control of his aircraft. The jet started losing altitude and disappeared off the radar screens. He was headed for disaster when suddenly, disguised as a man of the world, his guru Hari Baba appeared next to him in the cockpit and guided him to a safe emergency landing. He appeared before everybody, all the officers. He made them to touch and feel his appearance and he walked away. But he has not taken two rupees. The moment I come out from the mess, he was in the my car. It was then that Pilot Baba realized that it was time for him to act on his intuition and go looking for the answers he had long been meaning to find. In his prime at 35 years of age, he left the Air Force and gave away all his possessions. Renouncing society and family, he headed for the Himalayas. I walked 150 kilometers. I said, same guy, same man is there. Then he said, it's I who brought you here. It's in my cave, I'm living here, my sons are living, come. We are waiting for you. Your bed is waiting for a long time. Four people were there and one bed was for waiting. Say, this is yours. Pilot Baba knew he was home. Seven years I lived in the Himalayas, walking all over the Himalayas by foot, naked, a small piece of the cloth. This journey led Pilot Baba to the place of no mind, where one experiences the death of the beliefs that make up the personality and is reborn into the higher self. And I mastered everything. I made many good sense, great sense, long living sense. And then I know myself. This is enlightenment. This is a samadhi. This is a realization. Then I wanted to say, the people, I came back. Every three years, a Hindu spiritual fair called the Kumbha Mela takes place alternately in the cities of Allahabad, Nasik, Ujjain, and Haridwar, where, according to the legend, the nectar of immortality was accidentally spilled by the gods. At the Kumbha Mela, saints, sages, and common people alike gather to bathe in different bodies of water on auspicious dates as an act of fate and redemption. The Kumbha Mela is under the spiritual guidance of four major leaders. One such leader is Pilot Baba Mahamandaleshwar, a cardinal figure in the Juna Akara, one of the seven constituencies in Hinduism. All over the countries, the most important Akhara is the Juna Akhara. It is the oldest Akhara. Mahamandaleshwar is the powerful man in the Akhara. Selected by the president of the Akhara, they look always that someone is very good for the society and good for the health of the Akharas. Akharas are very powerful. 
In 2001, at the Kumbh Mela in Allahabad, Pilot Baba had his own camp, a structure capable of accommodating thousands of people. Many people could not get a residence, so I have put always bigger camps that I can help the people. I want to help the people and I want to share their loves and their loving feeling to coming in the Kumbh Melas. On that occasion, he invited Yogmata Keiko Aikawa, a Japanese yogini also known in India as Kela Giri Ma, to take underground samadhi in his camp. Yogis have allowed themselves to be buried into the earth, not for a few minutes, not for a few hours, but for several days. They call Bhugarb Samadhis, where the disciple is placed on an, in an underground pit, normally for a period of 72 hours. This is generally done in uh, public places to awaken uh, public consciousness about spiritual matters. Over anyone who carries out such an undertaking always does so with a purpose. I want to show the truth what you are. You are born from peace and love. So uh, you can feel it, you can see that we are not just for body, just for society, work, work, and eat and sleep. We have a lot of power and love inside of us. We can, in this world, we can have a heaven. The state of Samadhi brings one back to the origin of life itself, to a place of nothingness, from where the self is able to unite with all creation. Samadhi can liberate you, can make you understand that you are not a body. Not just by knowing, it will make you to understand practically. Samadhi can liberate you from the mind attachment. Pilot Baba presents Yogmata with a garland of flowers as a sign of deference and also as a reminder that, as in the past, he will be the facilitator of her Samadhi and will watch over her welfare on this side as well as the other, a customary practice among yogis. When any of the Himalayan sages go into Samadhi, the others are aware of where they are and uh, their protection is with them. She will go into the Samadhi and she will become a one with the earth consciousness and we are attached to the earth planet. So what will happen? Whatever message will pass within, say, that message will spread out. In the Samadhi pit, Yogmata will experience widespreads in temperature at this time of year from freezing at night to 90 degrees Fahrenheit or 38 degrees Celsius during the day. A sheet of metal covered with sand will seal off the pit. Yogmata can go up to 15, 20 days. She will be inside her body, but she will not awaken her consciousness to the bodies. She don't have to do anything. She don't have to feel anything. She is not in the state of feeling. She is beyond the feeling and knowing. So everything will happen naturally. During the day, pilgrims, devotees and commoners alike will visit the site, which is decorated with flowers and garlands. On the grounds, people do parikrama, a walk around the stall done in silence and reverence. After dark, Sadhus usually gather to hold vigil overnight in a near-marked area. On the third day, as the predetermined time approaches, crowds gather to witness the unearthing of Yogmata. Slowly, slowly, 20 minutes before, eh, I'm giving a message to communicate that you now I'm going to open it. Should it be necessary, he would only have to touch Yogmata for her to return to her body. Helping hands remove the sand that covers the metal sheeting. Pilot Baba descends in the pit to make sure that all is well. At the end of the period of time, not only are they still alive, but within a short period of time, they 
regain the ability to speak and to engage in ordinary mental functioning. This is an example of what we call voluntary control of internal states. These yogis have had to work on this for many, many years to bring it to such a degree of control. After her emergence from the ground, Yogmata is led to a large tented hall nearby. It is believed that the sighting of a self-realized master who has just taken samadhi is a most auspicious encounter and people line up to receive her blessings. The town of Devas, located in the state of Madhya Pradesh, in central India, is home to nearly half a million people. This region has been severely affected by a drought over the last five years, and the inhabitants of Devas can only draw water from public reserves once a week for 20 minutes. Nevertheless, Devas is expanding rapidly, and that was part of the appeal when Pilot Baba started looking for a place to undertake his samadhi. They normally identify a small place where they think the level of faith is high enough. The planning process could take anything between six months to a year. Once the place is chosen, there are many problems to contend with. You have to make arrangements for all the people who are going to come and watch and stay. You have to make arrangements for their food, then to take permissions from the district authorities. An event like this could cost a lot of money. The amount involved is between Three million to four million rupees. That equates to approximately 75,000 American dollars. And the main question is always how such a venture will be financed. There are rich people who are willing to give this kind of a donation. But normally how Pilot Baba operates is he wants the entire town to participate. So he wants people to make small contributions and raise that money so that everybody, the entire town, feels as if it's a part of the whole process. The ideal site is a field adjacent to the Kela Devi Mandir, a local temple that also has the capacity to simultaneously accommodate a carnival. The more people you get involved, the better it is. And uh, in small towns, sometimes not everybody in the family is spiritually inclined. So it helps to have the temple organize a small fair or mela where the kids can also come and they have something to do. Pilot Baba has arrived several days in advance to oversee the arrangements. He is staying in a home in a residential area of town where he receives people throughout the day, be they devotees, journalists, politicians, local people, and even celebrities. Here, he is spending time with Bollywood actor Vijay Gatki, who starred in the blockbuster Devdas and who is a self-avowed seeker. Every evening at dusk finds him at the Kela Devi Mandir, where he addresses the crowd on a spiritual topic. बाणी में ताकत है क्योंकि बाणी संकल्पित होती है बाणी बचन बद होती है आपने संसार में कुछ करने के लिए व्यवसायी बनने के लिए
संसार में सफलता प्राप्त करने के लिए कार्य की सिद्धियों को प्राप्त करने के लिए किसी के स्वरूप का कल्पना करने के लिए इमेज करने के लिए आपने बहुत कुछ संकल्प किया और उसके विकल्प बनाए हैं The discourse concludes with the arati, a traditional offering of the light where an odorless camphor flame is waved at the object of reverence. Arati has several applications and usually ends Hindu ceremonies. There are over 400 known versions of this chant. After the ceremony, people from the audience file in to pay their respects to Pilot Baba before he leaves the temple. The next morning, preparations are proceeding diligently at the grounds next to the temple. This is the first time he's taken samadhi in the last five years. This time he's taken samadhi in an airtight glass container. It's supposed to be for a period of 96 hours. So the glass container has been specially constructed. Several people are at work, some sealing the glass panels with silicone, while others set up neon lights on posts that have been erected all around the glass box. One acrobatic worker is on top of the structure, making sure that all the components are secure. As the sun is setting, Workers at the site are putting the finishing touches. Fences and gates are being painted. A canopy has been installed and around the glass box, grass and flowers have been planted. By the time the samadhi comes to an end, the stall will be surrounded by a small garden. To achieve a type of unusual behavior among yogis, there has to be intense concentration, there has to be a focus on the here and the now, they have to be very determined to do it because this is not an easy task. At the house the media is gathered to get statements and comments from Pilot Baba on the samadhi he is about to undertake the following day. I should be empty before going in the samadhi. Okay. My body should not have anything. My body should not have a memory of any food, any drinks, any toiletry systems. For that it is preparation required and will power to give a message to the self that my body should remain in this condition. So that's required. After 30 days on a liquid diet of soups and milk, ending with two days of no intake whatsoever, the will, or sankalpa in Sanskrit, becomes the most determining element of not only achieving, but maintaining the state of samadhi. The kind of will that's dealt with on yogic and spiritual paths is more like something like an ability to stay focused on one thing, rather than necessarily getting tensed up about it. At the end of the evening, Devotees sing the Arati to Pilot Baba. 
The chant is led by a local Brahmin priest and accompanied by the blowing of the conch, a Hindu tradition. The arati is followed by an incantation that culminates by prostrating at the feet of the guru. Residents in the town of Devas in central India are very enthused by the Mela or fair that is taking place in the fields adjacent to the Kela Devi Mandir, a local temple. Now in Devas, Pilot Baba takes Samadhi himself, which he hasn't done in the last five years. Today, Pilot Baba will enter an airtight chamber where he will sit undisturbed in a state of suspended animation for a period of 96 hours in temperatures up to 40 degrees Celsius, around 100 degrees Fahrenheit. The room of 9 feet by 9 feet by 9 feet contains 20,630 cubic liters of air. Man's lung capacity averages half a liter of air per normal breath for 7.5 liters a minute. Over a period of 96 hours, an average subject should run out of air in less than two days. In the real samadhi, you are not experiencing anything. You are only yourself, the super consciousness. Everything come under that one. That's the place of the samadhi. In the hours leading up to the event, he had hoped to be alone, but he kept giving his blessings to the numerous visitors seeking his darshan almost until the very last minute. He was barely able to observe a few hours of silence before making his way to the site around noon that day. Once or twice he had voiced a desire to spread this message, this kind of learning, which is Indian yogic learning, which is there with the saints and the masters for thousands of years has never been made public. And as he brings forth his teachings, Pilot Baba differentiates secular from esoteric knowledge. One jnana means a knowledge about the world, about the things, about the truth. It is a knowledge about it. Uh, one is not about. One is a truth. One is a really super consciousness. One is really God. So the books, the Bible, the Quran, the Mahabharata, the Gitas, all is not a truth. Because truth cannot be explained. But Samadhi is a home where we are enjoying and experiencing the truth. Thereby, knowledge implies union with truth, and the word yoga means union. To balance the body, Discipline is there. And to maintain the body, keep healthier, younger, is the asana. And keep the mechanism perfect is the pranayama. Asana is the Sanskrit term for the postures of Hatha Yoga, a practice now known the world over. And pranayama is the science of controlled breathing. Also, the yogi must handle abstinence or yamas, such as fasting, and niyamas, or observances, such as rituals. And after all this, the most powerful thing is to maintain this body is the pratyahara. It is a cleaning, outer and inner cleaning. The attention turns inwards and withdraws from the five senses. The yogi then wills himself to consciously work on subtler levels. Whenever you are demonstrating Samadhi in the society, then we have already a message to ourselves that we want to help the people. So projection is the sankalpa of the mind power. Several holy men, priests and sadhus, 
Hindu renunciates have come, some from very far away, to support Pilot Baba in his endeavor to promote world peace. A large crowd has also gathered as time draws near for him to enter into Samadhi. Pilot Baba gets up and slowly makes his way to the glass chamber in which he will sit undaunted for 96 hours. During that time, he will wear only a saffron lungi, a single piece of cotton cloth, wrapped around his waist. Once the door is closed, Pilot Baba assumes the lotus position. Shortly, the curtains will be closed and it will take him only moments to enter the state of Samadhi. Almost immediately, a fierce afternoon wind rises and the canopy has to be secured. In a few moments, the curtains will be reopened. From here on out, the lavender curtain will open for darshan or sighting for three to five minutes at 9 a.m. every morning and on the hour at 6, 7, 8, 9 and 10 o'clock in the evening. As samadhis are usually taken in the dark, the curtain will fend off excessive light and retard the heat. It is also placed out of respect for the person taking samadhi, who under different circumstances would remain undisturbed. There's no reason to, to cover about it. If they were truly uh, wanting uh, the audience to experience a phenomena, you don't, you don't need to pull the curtain. While many kept vigil overnight, the next morning Darshan saw Pilot Baba stoic in his state of Samadhi. He was not in uncharted territory, having performed several underground samadhis, one for 33 days in an ice cave in the Himalayas, one for 15 days at Devidura, and one for 7 days at Agra. Samadhi is the earth, oneness creating with the relations with the earth, and asking earth to take my message, and take my will, and take my cooperative power to help the people who ever walk nearby, or who were willed to connect with me to help them. It is a message to us. Pilot Baba also took Jaa Samadhi underwater for three days in Japan and at Almora in the Himalayas. When I go in the water, we take a media of water. The water is everywhere in everybody. We just invite the water energy. And plus with water energy, sometimes I invite so much fire energy uh, all the water will be finished within a 10 20 hours. So, body is completely creating a fire, and the water distance from the body it is burning. If the water is coming in contact of the body, it is burning, burning, burning. Then they have to fill up every 10 hours, 20 hours the water. Otherwise, the water is disappear, disappear, disappear. The attached samadhi, we have a direct communication to the sun and the air. So, akasa and air is appear everywhere. So in the air, you are no more physical air connecting, you are still connected. The subtle body exits the physical body and dwells on what is referred to as the astral plane, a level of energy akin to the blueprint of the universe. Your mind literally goes out of your body and can view the world from someplace else than your physical body. The following day, more and more people begin gathering. Each time the curtains open, Pilot Baba remains immobile behind the glass panes. That evening, Darshan took place 
at 6 and 7 o'clock as expected. The atmosphere was quiet after a very hot day. What happens in the process of samadhi is that your body becomes inert. It becomes like a corpse. It's a dead body. And you're inside this airtight container and this extreme heat. The temperatures were hitting about 40 degrees centigrade. would maybe be about you know, 100 degrees Fahrenheit. There's a fear of decomposition. You know, the body has to be in a pure physical condition for you to come back into it after the samadhi is over. Earlier, pilot Baba had been asked how he intended to deal with the heat. And at that time he said, I can do one of three things. Either I'll have to make it rain and make the temperature cool. The second thing is that the glass container itself in which I'm locked in might burst. Or the third thing which I will do if I feel it is necessary and it's getting unbearable is I'll remove my body physically from it and make it dematerialize. And so at 8 o'clock that night, when the curtains opened, the airtight samadhi glass box was empty. Pilot Baba's loincloth lay on the spot where his body was sitting an hour ago. I have heard that there are some yogis who can make themselves disappear. I will believe it when I see it. Sometimes for the believers to believe, some of the real people will do a demonstration and use a little show business. Now my professional op opinion of this is it appears to be more a magic trick. If you put me in that box, I can disappear. But for thousands present, seeing was believing. Though few cameras were turned on at the time and practically no media people were in attendance, in a matter of minutes, the crowd doubled. Journalists, photographers, and cameramen arrived. But at nine o'clock, when the curtains parted once again, Pilot Baba's silhouette appeared in the dark behind the glass panes, immobile and unchanged, as if all had imagined his disappearance. On the morning of the third day of Pilot Baba's Samadhi in an airtight glass, the town of Devas is abuzz from the events of the previous evening when the yogi disappeared from the chamber in which he has been sitting, only to reappear one hour later. At morning darshan, the great yogi sits unperturbed as devotees sing the arati, a devotional offering of the light, in his honor. The night before, national television networks reported Pilot Baba's alleged dematerialization on the late evening news after the media was provided with some of the footage seen here previously. When the curtain was lifted from this airtight container which has been sealed and there's 10,000 people watching, everybody was amazed to see that Pilot Baba was not inside. Because you've heard about these things that yogis do do this and it takes a while for the mind to register that hey, here's somebody who's really done it. Since the first time he took Samadhi over 25 years ago, Pilot Baba has been close with the legendary Mahavatar, meaning Great Incarnation of God, Baba Goraknath. Gorak Baba has always been behind the scenes. The relationship between Pilot Baba and Gorak Baba is very deep and Pilot Baba is aware when he goes into Samadhi that Gorak Baba is, if he has called Gorak Baba as he called Gorak Baba this time. He asked him to be present. So Gorak Baba's being here is just a reiteration of the fact that whatever work you are doing, I am with you. When Pilot Baba attained enlightenment, he received the final instructions in Kriya Yoga, the Yoga of Action, from Baba Goraknath. There are three dimensions. Right, the fourth dimension is Surya, the consciousness. Now, Pirate Baba gone to that Surya, that fourth dimension. Beyond the three dimensions. 
whole body remains in constant and the full equivalent life. It is because matter and energy. This body is material matter and it is survived by energy. So yesterday night what you see, it is because matter matter becomes energy and energy change into matter. Matter change into energy. This is a process, non process. And in brief process, it's going on. Great Yogi, Yogi can do that. Like you are in this There have been cases where people are known to both disappear and appear. That's a miracle by itself. Now, as far as a magician going and disappearing, I have not seen it. So on the last evening, the largest crowd yet gathered. And although lightning never strikes in the same place twice, there was anticipation in the air. This time, the media was present, and all the pilgrims, devotees, and non-believers alike had their cameras ready just in case. And as fate would have it, once again at 8 o'clock, Pilot Baba was absent from the room. His Japa Mala, a sort of Indian rosary with 108 beads, and his loincloth were left behind for all to see that wherever he went, he brought nothing. One time I, I, people cannot see because there are many saints sitting with me. Another seven, eight saints already came in my feet, that they were sitting with me. So if I'm appearing, then they have to appear. So in that particular time, I have to disappear and become like them. Other time I was gone out. He did so by transmuting the atoms of his body into pure energy and traveled to the other side of the veil. And then an hour later, when the curtain was open again, then of course by that time he had materialized. And on that last night, what a challenge for the mind. What profound questions Pilot Baba raised and what an impression he sent the people home with. And it was amazing and I think all the people who were there were very amazed. On the final morning, people started gathering very early, before the 9 o'clock darshan, in anticipation of Pilot Baba's coming out at 1 o'clock in the afternoon, 96 hours after going into the airtight glass chamber from where he turned out to be absent twice. Pilgrims chanted and devotees started decorating the site in an extravagant fashion, lining the pathway to a podium with rose petals. The crowd was large and several had made the journey from far away to be present when he came out. Finally, at one o'clock, the curtains opened for the last time on a now familiar sight. Four days, no light, no air, no water, no talking, no food, no restroom, no sleep, no problem. It takes Pilot Baba a few minutes to emerge from his state of Samadhi, at first stretching and then covering his eyes to acclimate them to daylight again. The 
ब्रदर चलो भैया आप लोग थोड़ा साइड से आ जाओ चलो साइड से आ जाइए आप लोग आप जब निकलेंगे चलिए दरवाजा बजा खाली करिए आप रास्ता खाली कर दीजिए महायोगी पायलट बाबा जी समाधि कक्ष से मंच के ऊपर जा रहे हैं रास्ता खाली कर दीजिए कोई भी व्यक्ति छोड़ा नहीं छोड़ा नहीं कोई भी व्यक्ति आफ्टर पुटिंग ऑन अ न्यू रोब ही मेक्स हिज वे टू द पोडियम टू एड्रेस द क्राउड ये लोग महाजोग पृथ्वी पर हुए हैं जिन्हें हम अधीन सकते हैं मीरा के रूप में गार्गी के रूप में आनंद मंगा के रूप में लेकिन मैं आपको साथ देता हूँ कि अगर आप ऐसा करते रहेंगे तो आप अपाहिज बन कर के मरेंगे इस पृथ्वी पर अगर आप ऐसा ही चोरी करते रहेंगे तो आज के बाद हम नहीं बदलेंगे तो आप अपाहिज बन The organizers, the sadhus, pandits or scholars, the devotees close to Pilot Baba all take advantage of this occasion to bestow presents on him that are reminiscing of the attributes of the Hindu gods. These offerings are a sign of respect and reverence for the guru or teacher. And after accepting wreaths and gifts, Pilot Baba leads the crowd to the temple to impart that blessing. One after the other, the devotees touch the feet of Pilot Baba in a sign of respect and reverence. Most will also make an offering of either a garland of flowers or money. Later, in a few days, he will return to his spiritual home, the Himalayas, to his ashram in Nanital, and plan the next public samadhi. His guru tell him, you have to go in public place, you have to teach them, you have to awake them. Whether we believe what we saw is a matter of choice. The silent voice of consciousness is our soul witness. You must enjoy the truth of the life, not the affair of the life. See, this life is most beautiful. And life is most mysterious. Nothing is more mysterious than the life.